So we've talked already before about a group of data being divided into four groups by finding the quartile. So quartile one, quartile two is the median, quartile three. That divides it into four parts, equal sized parts. Um, the quartiles are the three values that are one quarter, two quarter, or half and three quarters of the way through the list of values when arranged in increasing order. Lower is denoted by Q1, and Q2 as I just said. And remember the interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. It's basically taking the uh, ends of the box in a box and whisker, okay, the difference of those, so the length of that box. All right. So, uh, determining quartiles from a small data set. So, to determine the lower extreme, lower quartile, median, upper, etc., from this, you might want to practice with your calculator. So, why don't you get your calculator out? Because obviously you can rewrite these in order, but in your calculator, you can just enter them in whatever order is there. So, I'm going to go up and clear my list. And then I'll just enter 5.7, enter 4.2, enter 7.9, enter Okay, so 17 values. Count them up, just make sure you got all of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, so we can quit out of that. And then remember, we do our one variable stats. So this is a, just a single list. So when we go stat, calculate one variable stats, we have the list in L1. Our frequency list, there aren't any frequencies. They're all ones. So I'm just going to delete that, which if you delete it means the calculator knows this is all your list of data. Calculate that. Okay, and then you can just copy the map. So min or lower extreme is 3.1, quartile 1, 5.95, oops, uh, median, this cursor down there, 7.5, quartile 3. Max is 9.4. Okay. All right, so using these, construct your box plot. Okay, so just like yesterday. Um, and then it says use your calculator as well. So let's do it by hand. Um, minimum is 3.1, so we've already drawn the horizontal scale for you. So 3.1 would be about here. 5.95, if you have a ruler, then just have your ruler out and um, just follow along to do the plot so that it's horizontal. So 5.95 is very close to six. Uh, median is 7.5. Uh, quartile three is 8.15. Um, so that's say, about here, and max is 9.4. Okay, horizontal, horizontal, mine kind of like ends up sort of moving down. So I'm just going to fix this a little bit. And this one. Okay, then I'll do a lower, upper, 
vertical. Where are you? Vertical. Vertical. Yes. And then just fix those up. Sorry. All right, close enough. Okay. So that's what yours should look like. So as you can see, very highly concentrated in the um, the top half, top fifty percent, compared to the bottom fifty percent. And it says use the TI-83 to construct the box plot. Okay, so remember, you already have that data in there. You may even have um, it all set up. So if you go to Y equals, um, make sure you have no equations. Remember yesterday when I did it, I had some equations left in there. It didn't conflict, but sometimes depending on what those equations were, it might give you an error because it can't graph everything. Um, nothing in there. My plot one is still on from yesterday, so yours might be as well. Let's just go check it out. So I'm going to quit out of that and go stat y equals to get sort of into the details about each stat plot. Enter on the first one. It's turned on. And remember, we did um, this. We did the box plot twice. So it was the first one listed. Whether it's listed in order on your calculator or in rows, it's the first box plot that you want to enter on. Okay, and um, just check your X list is L1, that's third frequency, there's one of each. Mark is whatever, mine's blue if it's not colored, doesn't matter. And then we want to check our window. Because yesterday we were doing a set of data that was marks percents on a test, so 0 to 100. Here, this is going from 3.1 to 9.4, so let's go from 0 to 10. Okay, and the y's don't matter. So now, if I graph on that, oh, maybe it doesn't matter. Let's just see. Uh, window. Oh, yeah. 0 to 0 doesn't make sense. So 0 to 10, and then uh, scale, I'll go up by once. So I put um, 0 in the min and 10 in the scale, so it's off. Okay. Change that. Then press graph. Okay, and you should see the whole thing. All right. Now, yesterday when we did that first graph in the calculator, it would show us an outlier. Okay, there'd be a gap um, in that bottom whisker, and there isn't one. So that tells you, if you use the first one, that um, there's no outlier, but we're going to calculate and make sure. Okay, we'll do it the wrong way. So, or the algebraic way. So determine the interquartile range. Remember that's Q3 minus Q1. So that was 8.15 minus 5.95. Okay, so 8 point, oh sorry, yeah, 8.15 minus 5.95. 2.2 question. No problem. Okay, so um, find the interquartile range. And then remember from yesterday how to determine if it's an outlier. We have to find the value of Q1 minus the inter, um, sorry, minus 1.5 times the interquartile range, and then we have to find Q3 plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. Okay, so you do that.
Okay, so if we take a look on our graph, 2.65 would be, um, that would be 2.5, it would be here. Okay, and there's nothing there, so there's no outlier at the beginning. And 11.5 would be up here, or 11.45, and there's nothing up there. So there are no outliers in this set of data. Okay, so, um, I'll give you a sec to get caught up there. All right, so um, now what do we do when we have a, a huge data set? Okay, so estimating the quartiles. So this will happen when there's intervals. Obviously, if you have a huge data set um, and they're all distinct values, um, then you can put them in order. You can use your calculator, that kind of thing. But sometimes you're not going to have each individual value. So this frequency frequency chart here does not tell you the individual values. So how do you find uh, a value for the median or a value for the quartile? That's what we're going to look at now. Okay. So and from here also, we're going to, to graph an ojai. Often, they've got away from calling it that on IB exams. They now call it um, a cumulative frequency curve. So really, it's pretty obvious what you're supposed to do, but technically it's called the OJI. Okay. Um, so uh, the number of cu customers for a movie theater was recorded every day for 200. The table below shows the results. Find the cumulative frequencies and then use these and the upper boundary of each interval to draw an OJI. Okay. So they were. So these are the number of customers. Okay, here. So this says that on two days there were uh, 10 customers or less. Okay, on eight days there were between 11 and 20 customers. On 18 days there were between 21 and 30 customers. Okay, we don't know the specifics, we just know the interval there. All right, so that's what that's meaning. And um, cumulative frequency, so that means starting from the lowest, obviously there was two in that interval. Then at the end of 20, so from one to 20 customers, there was a total of 10. From one to 30 customers, there was a total of 28. So basically you take the two, add the eight, makes 10, add the 18 makes 28, add 22 makes 50, so you keep adding on. It's cumulative, just like a cumulative exam. You keep adding on, all right? So same word. So finish that part of the chart. Okay, and if you, were, if you were told that they kept a record for 200 days, then your cumulative frequency at the end should be 200. Okay. Now I'm going to have to I'm gonna split my screen here. Okay, so now we want to prepare one. Notice how the scale has already started for you. And, and what it said is to use these pre cumulative frequency and the upper boundary to draw 
1. So we have to plot, so that means uh, at 10 for x, we have to plot 2 for the frequency. At 20, we have to plot 10 for the frequency. Okay. Um, and then obviously here, this would be 30, 40, 50. Actually, I'm going to make mine bigger. So this is too small, and I'll just look at my paper. Okay, and then notice how these are going up by 20s. You gotta be equally, so you can't change the scale. Okay. So remember, the horizontal is always whatever the data values are. So in this case, it's number of customers. Okay, and now it's not just frequency, it's cumulative frequency. And this is at um, a movie theater. So number of customers. Okay. All right. So now you can start plotting. So now mine's a little bit bigger. Yours should be decent size. So look back at your chart. Uh, so you're using the end value. So the 10, the 20, the 30. So at 10, you're going to plot uh, 2. It's about there. 20, you're going to plot 10. Okay, two is going a little low. Oh, that's 10. This needs to be a little lower here. Mm, about there. 10. Uh, at um, 30, you're going to plot 28. At 40, you're going to plot 50. At 50, you're going to plot 114. And our scale is like, it, it's still not going to be perfect, right? Um, so 110, so 114 would be about there. The bigger the graph, the easier it would be. So then at 60, you're going to plot 160. That one's a nice one. 70, you're going to plot, plot 180. That one's nice. Uh, 80, 198, and 90 is 200. Okay, and join up with straight lines, not a curve, straight lines. A little thinner on mine here. And those are using the exact. So I'll have to play around with this a little bit. So I've got to fix mine up, but yours should be a little bit easier. Closer. Okay, go to the computer. Uh, the smart board doesn't always read it very well. Okay, so there can do it much better. And here. Uh, 
Okay. Well, that's pretty close. Okay. So that's an ogive. Okay. Or the cumulative frequency graph or curve. Right? It's not actually curved. You're joining it up with a straight line. Um, I mean, we can curve it to, like, when you get really detailed in higher level uh, studies at university and stuff, you'd make a curve. Um, or even if, yeah, yeah, you can estimate it with a curve and then you can, um, you know, come up with more information on it. But we're just doing straight lines. All right? So, some questions to answer based on this. This page. So it says there are 200 data values. Since Q1 is the boundary for the lowest quartile of the data, then Q1 is the 50th value, since 25% of 200 equals 50. So complete the following. So we're trying to find which value it is, not the value of it. We'll do that in a sec. But right now, Q1 means the, the 50th value. Okay? So we're not actually finding the value of Q1 yet. Median in this case, is for 50%, but there's 200 values. So 50% of 200 is the 100 data value. Okay. Q3 is um, 3, 75% of the data values, which would be 150. Now remember, it's not going to be exactly what it really is. We don't know all the exact values. This is a frequency chart where there are intervals. So don't get all caught up in uh, the exact value of it. We don't know, right? If you had all of the values, okay, and a frequency, then yeah, you can figure it out exactly, but we don't. Uh, so use the OJIVE to estimate the following values. So we're going to go find the Quartile 1, so that's the 50th data value. So you want to look at your frequency. Let's go right here. Okay, so 50 is about there, so you want to go across. Well, it looks like it would be 40. Okay, we go all the way across here. And probably, if you look at your cumulative frequency chart, we did have a cumulative frequency of 50, right? And exactly. And that was for the last value of 40. So that we know is 40. Median is the 100th value. So you go up here, we're going to have to estimate, right? So if I go down, that would be 45. I would say about 47, okay, or 48. Uh, that's 45 there. I'd say about 47. So if we were to, so 47 or 48, so it's acceptable. So we'll be a little bit lenient in accepting, but past that, not so lenient. Oops. Quartile 3 is 75% of the data, which is 150. Um, so that's here, halfway, so go across, looks like it'd be about there, then you go down, that to me looks like um, about, same thing, about 57 as well. On mine, yours might be a little bit different. Usually what we would do is, if we're asking you these types of questions, we would give you the ogive, okay? so that there's not a double up of errors, right? So if you graph it a little bit off and then find that, it'll be more off. Um, so we probably do that. Interquartile range is, um, would be 57 minus uh, 40. Okay, so 57 minus 40 is 17. Okay. Um, just let me see here. Is there a question? Okay, so now percentiles. You've probably heard people talk about percentiles. They're often used, like, if you have, say you have like a younger brother or sister, um, like a baby, oftentimes when uh, babies are little, 
um, the doctors will say, oh, your the baby's height is within the 90th percentile. So that means um, there's only 10% of babies that are taller. Or um, sometimes it's used in standardized testing. So if you write like the SAT in the States, they might, well, they give you a score, but sometimes they'll, they'll scale and say the 95th percentile. That's how you score. They don't really care what you scored, but that means you scored um, above 95% of all the people writing it. Okay, so that's what we're talking about here. So value is in the nth percentile. And so we use a capital P for this, but there's a, a subscript. So it's not probability, it's P with a subscript, so you know which percentile. So we denote that if it's greater than n percent of the data. For example, the median is the 50th percentile and denoted P50, right? So uh, median, is, median can be denoted by P2 and P50. First quartile is the 25th percentile and is denoted by P25. So the first quartile can be Q1 or P25, all right? So use the above OJIVE to estimate each of the following percentiles. So P10 means we want to know, uh, we need to know that 10% of 200, okay, to know how many data values we're looking at. So that's the 20th data value. Okay, so that's where we're looking. So on our chart, 20th is here. So we go across to our graph and we look down. It looks to me on mine um, to be, uh, on mine it looks about 25. Um, 35th percentile, so we go 35% of 200, that's going to be the 70th data value. So you look back, 70th, halfway, is about there, and so 45, I would say this is about 43, or 44, so about 43. So these percentiles, they don't use a percent symbol in it. It's just P10, but it's understood to be 10% of the data. So then 60% of 200 is 120th value. 120th, go across. So I'd say that's about 51. And 95th is 95% times 200 is what, 190? And then 90th value. So that's about there, which looks to me about 76 online. Okay, so then uh, use the above OJIVE to estimate the percentile ranking of each of the following values. So 10, 10 people um, going to the theater, 10 is what percentile? Okay, so 10, we want to look so now these are the data values, right? So at 10, that was actually our first one, okay? You can actually join this up with zero as well if you want here, okay? Um, so um, 10 is uh, two people, frequency of two, out of the 200. So 2 out of the 200 in total times by 100% would be uh, 1, day. Oops. Yeah, 1%. Uh-oh. Sorry. 1% of 
1%, um, sorry, I'll put that up here, 1%, so the notation is P1. Twenty-five. We have to estimate. So twenty-five. We actually thought that was twenty. I think before, uh, in a, from a different question. Um, so um, frequency of twenty. So that's going to be B10. Based on my graph, if you look at the solutions on Schoology, they might be a little bit different uh, based on when you graphed it on paper. I did mine on the smart board and the lines might be a little bit different. So 50, I think, was an exact value on our chart. So 50 was, you can actually look back, that was uh, for 114, because uh, that was um, any multiple of 10 is going to be an exact point on your graph. That was 114. So what percent is that? Would be 7%. And then 70 is also um, the end value of an interval for 180. Oops. So 70 up here, that was 180. So 200 and 100% is 90%. That will be 390. So if you are talking about something like test scores, you want to have a percentile rating that's high. That means you're higher than all that percent of people that wrote it um, are below you. So P90 means you're at near the top, right? 90% of the people writing the test scored lower than you. For maybe for um, uh, I don't know for certain things like um, in sports, there's some things that you want to be smaller, like speed in track. You want to be, like if you're talking about the values, you would want to have the smaller value, so you would want a small percentile rank. Because percentiles go in order from smallest to biggest, right? So for track, you want a smaller time that you're writing. Okay, and then it says use the box plot from question one to determine the following percentiles. So remember, P25 is the same as Q1. P50 is the same as the median. P75 is the same as Q3. And this is the same as Q2. So if you back, look back to question one, then your Q1 was 5.95. So that's your percentile rate, or percentile uh, value. And then median was 7.5. And Q3 was 8.15. Okay, that's really it.